Here we go. Welcome back to Full On Football. I really hope you're enjoying this special that we're doing with John Aloisi. Um, let's rejoin him and let's see what he has to say about that famous penalty that he scored. To the chase now, we're going to get to that moment where I think everybody in the world's probably asked you about this question. Um, that historical moment in Australian football on uh, November the 16th, 2005 where, um, I mean, basically the destiny of Australian football was totally changed. We will never go back to that stage. We only move forward. Um, obviously the match was really tight and um, it got down to penalties and when, when obviously you have to ask who's going to take penalties, you put your hand up and you said, no, I want to take the fifth penalty. You're either hero or villain and you said you're going to be a hero. Yeah, it was funny now looking back at it because uh, I was quite confident um, even when we uh, finished extra time that uh, we were going to win on penalties and, and I didn't even know who was taking a penalty and Graham Arnold uh, was asking who wants to take one and I put my hand up and I said, you know, that I will and he goes, I'll put you down as number one and I said, no, put me down as number five and, and then that uh, halfway line, you know, the... The first penalty taker was Harry and I turned around to Lucas and asked if he was taking one and he said yeah and I said yeah I'm taking one too and he goes oh what number are you and I said number five hero or villain and he laughed and he goes oh so what it would be what will it be and I said oh of course the hero and uh, funny enough it uh, turned out that way. Yeah, I want to take. I want you to take us to that moment. You see, Harry Kuehl score, a uh, Lucas Neal score, and then Tony Vidmay, which you said, God, I've never actually seen him take a penalty, and and he ended up scoring as well. And of course, Mark Schwartz uh, pulled off some great saves, two great saves. But you actually gave him inside information about that because you had been playing with these uh, against these Ukrainians and with them, and so you were able to tell him exactly, you know, where they favoured their shots. Well, <laughs> I did tell him about one of the players that I think he was going to take their last penalty and he didn't end up taking it, <laughs> which was lucky for me, uh, which was Pablo Garcia because I played with him at Osasuna and also Chengi Morales, but he didn't end up taking a penalty. But uh, I can't take him to the credit away from Mark Swartz. So he was brilliant on the Thank night and, and his saves were unbelievable. And uh, Especially after the Mark Viduka penalty and I thought, oh no, this could turn out that I need to take a penalty to, to keep Australia in it and um, and lucky Marks saved the next penalty and uh, and that's when all the nerves from me just went and I was confident I was going to take the winning one. Okay so he saves that ball, you grab it and you go to that spot. Now take us through what happened. No, when I was walking through uh, to the, the penalty spot from the halfway line I was uh, I was really confident and, and sort of uh, happy because uh, I was saying to myself, you know, you're going to take Australia to the World Cup now. Just do what you were doing yesterday, which I practiced penalties with Lucas Neal. Um, took about five penalties all in the same position and, and down that end, which uh, I didn't know we were going to be taking it down that end. Um, I thought we might have because that's usually where the, the majority of the Australian supporters um, to the whole stadium was Australian supporters but the singing ones go and uh, and you know I, I just said to myself just uh, take the same run up and um, and hit it with the way you were hitting it yesterday and and I did that. <laughs> you did that all right and then everybody just went you, you went crazy the guys went crazy the crowd went crazy the whole of Australia went crazy I mean I was one of the millions that cried as well. It was unbelievable. That euphoria was just unbelievable. Yeah, it was. It was uh, a feeling that you can't describe. I think everyone had a, a certain feeling because it was a feeling of uh, euph euphoria and also relief because it's been so long uh, and uh, it was 32 years in waiting and uh, we finally got there and, and I can't even... Uh, tell you how the way I felt but uh, the day before I asked um, our team manager Gary Moretti where our families would be sitting where the tickets were and uh, so I knew where they were and as soon as I scored that penalty I ran straight to them and and uh, everyone knows the rest about taking the top off and everything else a bit embarrassing but uh, <laughs> at the time you don't think about it at least you didn't do a monkey crawl or something like that that's pretty embarrassing look um how did you feel when you found out that they were going to dig up that penalty spot and put it in the hall of fame the sporting hall of fame next to like farlap's heart and um uh, donald bradman's kit i mean that is pretty amazing isn't it yeah it is you know at the time um you 
really only doing it for your teammates and yourself and uh, to get yourself to the World Cup and then you realise after the game you know how many people you you've made happy and uh, they, the whole of Australia was really behind the, the whole team and and uh, and you, you start to hear stories like that and you think you know it did make such an impact and and it's nice to hear but uh, I don't really get to hear most of it because I'm never really at home in Australia and always overseas so um, the time I do come home um, I, I get to relive it a little bit and um, and hear how how everyone um, ended up having a great night and a great year. Oh, well, I, I'll tell you, there was not one Australian that didn't know who John Aloisi was in the morning. I'll tell you what, it was unbelievable. Um, your life really did change after that. I mean, there were many things that happened to you. It, it, like you say, you never go back to that time again. Um, and who would have known what would have happened in the World Cup if it wasn't for that foul with, against Italy? I mean, you know, perhaps we could have gone on even further. And I think we, it was a successful uh, World Cup campaign anyway. But, um, you know, what ifs? We can be talking about that all, all night, hey? Yeah, well, that's the beauty of the game. It's always... Uh you know, what if this happened, what if that happened and, and uh, you know, people can uh, say this one should have played more, this one uh, should have played less, but uh, that's the beauty about uh, football, you know um, it's uh, a, a game that everyone talks about and loves and uh, it was, yeah you know, the penalty was given at the last kick of the game but, um, you know the, that's part of the game and yeah and we were just unlucky and to get it against us, but uh, we had a good World Cup and, and we should be proud of what we achieved there. And um, It would have been nice to go on even further, but um, you never know, next World Cup might be uh, a big one again. Yeah, definitely. Um, I was going to say, what was your best moment in the World Cup? Oh, I have to say scoring the goal against Japan because uh, when I ended up... Um, coming on in that game we were losing 1-0 and uh, I knew that we needed to win because it would have been virtually all over for us um, big disappointment after all the hype about going to the World Cup after so long and end up uh, having to go home virtually straight away even though we would have had another two games but no one would have expected us to beat Brazil and Croatia was a very strong European side and um, and to turn it around like we did the last 10 minutes was unbelievable. I, I don't think anyone expected that. Three goals in seven minutes, whatever, and that was the best feeling, you know, at the World Cup. I know most of the commentators, the, 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 the football commentators, were saying that the Japan game was our hardest game, apart from Brazil, because, as you say, you don't, you don't expect to... You don't know how you're going to go against Brazil being such a powerhouse, but, uh, yeah, they did say that that was our toughest game, and in the end that was our, our best result. So... Um, I want to go on to also your, your, the goals that you've scored for Australia. You're currently 27 goals for 47 appearances. Another great South Australian legend, Damien Murray, has got the record 29. Now, are you hoping to uh, uh, achieve that milestone perhaps with the uh, Asian Cup? Yeah, I'm hoping. I'm hoping that I can score a few more goals and, uh, and end up becoming the leading goal scorer of uh the Australian national team would be nice, um, but uh, I'd first rather win the the Asian Cup. You know, the, it's a team of uh, it's a it's a game of uh, 11 players or 23 in the squad, and um, it would be a great achievement if we can win it. But personally, if I can score goals, which is my position, you know, that would be great too. Now, what are you going to be doing after the Asian Cup? Because you finished with Alaves, um, are you going to come back to Australian to the A League? Um, and will we ever see John Aloisi playing for Adelaide United? Um, I really don't know yet. As you said, I'm out of contract. There's a few clubs interested, but I can't say where I'm going to be because I really don't know. So I'm uh, hoping to um, settle my future after the Asian Cup and, um, and we'll see where I, where I go from there, but I can't say at the moment. Now, I know family is very important to you, your own immediate family and your extended family. Um, they've supported you through your journey, especially your parents have supported you through your journey in your football career. If there was one thing that you could say to your father, Rocky, what would it be? Um, I don't know. What could I say to him? Not to get so upset when his team loses, I suppose. <laughs> no, that's never going to happen. You know that. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, yeah. No, nah, of course, that it... Uh, it, it the, one of the best feelings after the Uruguay game was to see my dad there and uh, he wasn't able to come to the World Cup but to see him um, after the Uruguay game and, and just see how happy he was was, uh, 
was one of the best feelings, I, I suppose. You know, not only him, but my wife, my kids, and you know, they were all there to experience with myself. Yeah, and what a wonderful experience it was. Well, John, look, I'd just like to say thank you. I know you're really busy while you're here, and, and just thanks very much for giving us your time, sharing yourself with the whole of South Australia. I wish you well in the Asian Cup and for your future football. And I'd just like to say on behalf of everyone, all the Australians, thanks for providing that most exciting historical moment in Australian football and um, uh, when you scored that historical penalty. And uh, uh, wish you all the best, and, and thanks very much for joining us on Full On Football. Yeah, thanks a lot. It's been a pleasure.